Hey, Aldersgate Online, welcome back. Or if you're joining us for the very first time, we're so excited to have you. We're in a three-week series. This is the third week. We're talking about living life on purpose. The purpose of life is to live life on purpose. And we've been talking about three questions. Who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? And to answer those three questions, we've been using three prepositions, three small words, in, to, and for. Life on purpose is knowing my position in Christ, my responsibility to Christ, and my mission for Christ. Who am I? That's knowing my position in Christ. I am a child of God, and that and only there is where I get my worth. My responsibility to Christ is to remain in Christ, to abide in Him. And today we're going to look at that third question, where am I going? That's my mission for Christ. So, last week we were in John chapter 15. John chapter 15 is this great place where Jesus talks about the vine and the branches. And he says, my father, God the Father, is the vine dresser. So he's like the the farmer, so to speak. And Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. And we talked last week about how our responsibility to Christ is to remain in Him, to abide in Him. We want to just jump right to that fruit. But we are called to remain or abide in him. Listen to this. The branches do not sustain the vine. Rather, the vine sustains the branches, right? Like that just makes sense. It's the vine that sustains the branches, not the branches sustaining the vine. But the vine cannot express itself without the branches. Ah, that's our mission for Christ. I told you we just want to jump straight to the fruit sometimes. We can't jump to the fruit until we understand our responsibility to Christ is to remain in Him, to abide in Him. And as we remain or abide in Him, then we express who He is to the rest of the world. As the branches, we express the vine. Why are we here? Where are we going? Our ultimate mission for Christ is to be an expression of Him and to bring glory to Him. Let's look at it in Paul's words from 2 Thessalonians, okay? So if you've got a Bible, I'd love for you to go there, Bible app on your phone, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. This is part of Paul's words to the Christians, the church at Thessalonica. And here's what he says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. I'm just going to look at two verses. In the English Standard Version, verses 11 and 12 of 2 Thessalonians 1 reads this way. To this end, we always pray for you. So Paul is saying he's praying for the Christians at Thessalonica, thus us today. We always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of His calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by His power. Why does He make us worthy of His calling? Look at verse 12. So that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in Him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our mission for Christ is to bring Him glory, to live out our calling so that He is glorified. So, who am I? I am a child of God. In Christ. Why am I here? My responsibility to Christ is to remain and to abide in Him. And where am I going? In every place I go, I am to bring glory to Jesus Christ, to the vine. I am a branch that expresses the glory of Jesus Christ. Oz Guinness is a famous author and he talks about our calling this way. He says we have two callings. All of us have two callings. We have a primary calling and a secondary calling. 
And that primary calling is the same for all of us. It doesn't matter what you do. doesn't matter how old you are. doesn't matter how educated you are. doesn't matter how much money you have. We all have the same primary calling, and that is to bring glory to Jesus Christ, to make His name known, to glorify Him throughout all the earth. Our secondary calling, well... We have different personalities, we have different talents, we have different skills, we have different jobs, and in those places where life takes us, we bring glory to God there. So I'm a pastor, you may be a banker, you may be a farmer, you may be a teacher. Our primary calling is the same. We are to bring glory to God. Our secondary calling helps us figure out where we're going to do that, how we're going to do that. And so I want to walk us through something that Rick Warren shares. Rick is the pastor or was the pastor of Saddleback Church in Southern California. He walks through an acronym or or an acrostic called SHAPE, S-H-A-P-E, to help us figure out how we bring glory to God, uh, to help us answer the question, where am I going? So I'm going to work through that really quickly, all right? So here's the S stands for spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Now, I hope you tune into the sermon notes section on aldersgate.info or the, what we call the SLAP guy, which stands for study, listen, apply, and pray. Every week we give you scriptures that you can dig into deeper. This week there's two places I want you to dig into deeper. Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12. Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, those are places where Paul talks about spiritual giftings. And there's so much richness when you read through the places there in Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12. But today, I'm just going to give you a few bullet points about spiritual gifts that you'll find when you read through Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12. Here's a few bullet points. Number one, they are given by the Holy Spirit, period. The Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts. Yes. Number two, everybody who's in Christ, everybody who's a believer has a spiritual gift. You didn't miss standing in line the day they were handed out. Everyone has a spiritual gift. Number three, we can't earn them and we don't get to choose them. The Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts as the Holy Spirit wills to every person in Christ. We don't get to earn them or we don't get to choose what spiritual gifts are given to us. Number four, the spiritual gifts are given to us for the common good. They're not for our own good, but yet they're for the good of the body of believers, all of those who are in Christ, the church, if you will. So listen... Here's what this means. If we haven't discovered our spiritual gift, in a way we've lost connection with the Holy Spirit, and in another way we're robbing those around us because we're not using our spiritual gift that the Holy Spirit has given to us. Now, when you read through Romans 12, when you read through 1 Corinthians 12, you're going to find several examples of spiritual gifts. I personally take the stance that that's not a complete list of all the spiritual giftings, but you're going to see things like administration. You're going to see things like leadership. You're going to see things like teaching. You're going to see things like preaching. You're going to see things like giving. These are just some examples of spiritual gifts. Listen, spiritual gifts help us answer the question, how will I be on mission? For Christ. Okay? Now, the H in the acrostic shape stands for heart. Now, when we talk about being created in the image of God, we're talking about being three dimensional because Jesus is also Trinity, or, or God is Trinity, right? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We're created in physical body, we're created with soul and spirit. Spirit connects to God. Our soul is our heart. When the Bible speaks of our heart, it's the soul, it's the deepest part of who we are, who we are our heart, our will, our mind, our emotions. And all of our hearts are different. Like some of our hearts beat differently. I don't mean that literally, I mean it figuratively. We all have different passions. We all have things that are different that get us out of bed. Like what gets you out of bed in the morning? It may be different for you than it is for me, right? But our heart tells us where we will use our spiritual gifts. 
Like spiritual gifts tell me how I'm going to serve. Heart tells me where I'm going to do that. I always use this illustration. Let me give you this. Um, I love kids, but that's not the place I want to serve. That's not my passion, right? You may love children, and that's the place you want to serve. We can have the same exact spiritual gift, but serve in different places because of our heart or because of our passion. I hope you follow me there. A in the shape acrostic stands for abilities. Now listen, spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. Abilities are natural talents. You could argue they're God-given, but all of us, even those who are non-believers, have abilities. And you can find tons of different abilities in the Bible. I'll just give you a brief list here. Artistic ability, architectural ability, administering, baking, boat making, candy making, debating, design, debating. Both of my kids have that ability. Designing, embalming, embroidering, engraving, farming, fishing, gardening, leading. I can go on and on and on. There's tons of abilities find in the Bible, found in the Bible. They may not necessarily be spiritual gifts, but they're abilities. But there's still a place that we can serve and be on mission for Christ. Some people say this, any ability used to glorify Christ is a spiritual gift. I'm not sure I agree with that, but the point is the Holy Spirit gives us gifts, but God also gives us natural abilities that He wants us to use to be on mission for Him. The P in the acrostic shape stands for personality. God created all of us unique. You've heard this, all of our fingerprints are different. Our personalities are different. Some of us are introverts. Some of us are extroverts. We get, some of us get re-energized by being around people. Some of us just want to be alone in a closet, right? Some of us are uh, very structured. Some of us wouldn't know structure if it hit us upside the head, right? Some of us are spontaneous. Some of us want to be in control of things. We all have different personalities. Again, you and I can have the same spiritual gift, but we may use it very differently because of our personality and the way God shaped us. And finally, the E stands for experience. And what Warren means by this is life experience. I'll share it out of Paul's words uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 4. Paul's talking about how we have different experiences in life. And God comforts us in our own experiences so that we can comfort others in their experiences, right? I think the context there in 2 Corinthians 1 is Paul saying, listen, when we find ourselves in a place of hurt in life or woundedness or trauma or loss, God meets us in those places so that then we can help other people who are going through the same thing in those places. And that's what experience is. Sometimes, man, our mission for Christ is just birthed out of our experience with Him and our experience in life. And that helps develop that heart that we talked about and helps us answer the question, where will I be on mission for Christ? I brought a baseball with me today. A couple of weeks ago, my family and I attended a Texas Rangers game in Arlington. They were playing the Houston Astros. And we were seated along the first base line. And uh, in about the sixth inning, Martin Maldonado for the Astros was up to bat. And he hit a ball, right, a foul ball, right over the net. And so here's what I mean. It wasn't one of those foul balls that went way up and then took its time to come way down. This thing came right over the safety net, right over the foul ball net. And when it came over the foul ball net, man, here's what I did. I just reached out my hands. The ball came right into my hands. I caught the ball. Man, I jumped up. I was holding in the air. Everyone around me was cheering. The crowd went crazy. The whole game stopped just because I caught the foul. I'm just joking. But listen, I caught a foul ball that came right to me. In fact, I have a picture of me catching the foul ball. And if you look at all the people in the background, their mouths are open. Like, I can't believe he actually caught that, right? I don't know how I caught it. I've been to tons of baseball games, never caught a foul ball. And literally, as I look back on that moment, it was just a reaction. I mean, that ball was zooming right over the top of the net. I didn't even have time to think. I just put out my hands and I caught the ball. I mean, it just landed right in my hands and I caught the ball. It was just a natural reaction instinct. <laughs> Truth be told, I was more surprised than anybody else around me. That's our mission for Christ. Glorifying Christ should come so natural to us that we don't even think about it. That it's just instinct. That we know ourselves so well, our shape, our spiritual gifts, our heart, our abilities, our personality, our experiences, that we know each other so well 
our, we know ourselves so well that it's just instinct, it's just natural to bring glory to Christ. So three weeks, I hope by now, you know your position in Christ, your responsibility to Christ, and your mission for Christ. So go live life on purpose.